Alright. Hey, welcome to Second Chance Garage. Today we're going to be uh, finishing up the assembly of this LQ9 and we're going to show you guys uh, gapping the rings and putting the heads on. Getting her ready for boost. Yep, this thing uh, is destined for destined for an eBay GT45. So. Yep, and destined to go in some grandma's car. That's our game plan right now. So we're calling it the Grandma's LQ9. So, bingo. That's what I'm going to name the car. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm set on bingo. Grandma's LQ9. I like bingo. Or bingo runner. Bingo runner? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. Here we go. This literally kept me up at night wanting to gap the rings. Like, I, I literally couldn't go But he, he couldn't do it. And he couldn't uh, not gap the rings bigger to. for boost, I so now, we did the right the complete, thing. Yeah. This is the complete wrong way to do the right thing, though. Uh, so basically, I'm going to... Well, I mean, gapping the rings is the right way to gap the rings, but assembling it without a ring compressor is kind of the wrong way to do that. You didn't have to tell him that. We were just going to show oh, him gonna... the ring gapping and then show and it then assembled. It was... Oh, I didn't know that. But now you know. That yeah. we're not doing that. My ring compressor disappeared at some point in the past, and so I use a flathead screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take these from what I think is about 20 on the upper. Yeah. Maybe 20 thousandths is what they've got probably now. A more, probably like 24, but yeah, something like that. We're going to take the uppers to 28 and the lowers to 30. Yep, 30 at least. I started, the first one I did, it was under, and uh, so I filed it to 30 and assembled it. And then the next one was 32. So it's 30 or 32, whatever I'm feeling like on that particular cylinder. Just a little bigger. That's all she needs, and then she'll enjoy being force-fed. Yep. Hopefully. Uh, little feeler gauge, the world's smallest feeler gauge. I, of course, <laughs> use the engine as a holder. Feeler holder. All right, let's get to it. So we'll do a montage of the world's saddest little ring tapper. Man, I don't want an electronic one. I do. I totally. It's because I left it out in the rain, like everything else I own. So when you file rings, they put like a little like burr on this side because it's filing this way, and you can feel it with your fingernail. You don't want to put that in the motor, so you also have to file right there. And usually, this end will have a little burr on it. What you don't I do want to do anything that's gonna score the piston wall. So I just do that real quick, and it's gone. So just like one turn in the in the ring filer, and then the same thing. I put this in, hit that in just real quick, and the burr's gone. Hmm. All right, what do we got? It's a little, eh, it's a little tight for my liking, but that's 28. It's too tight. Oh, that's well, yeah, that's right at 28. That's <laughs> I want a little, I want sloppy 28. Yeah, we want low, com want we nice. want low compression and oil consumption. But yeah. under boost, we want it to be nice. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't take much off at the time, I'll be honest with you. One day I'll upgrade to like a nice one, but... Will you though? I won't. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. Don't be absolutely ridiculous. Give her a little bath. Scrub behind the ears. All I'm really going for for here is not looks or cleaning all this gunk off the piston itself. All I want out is the stuff that's actually in any of the ring grooves. Yeah. You don't want anything that can hang up your rings. Yeah, I want the rings to be able to rotate really freely on the piston. All right, while he's scrubbing away, I'll show you these nifty little ARP cam bolts we got here unnecessary. because these <laughs> unnecessary because uh, these were what was going to fail surely before anything else the only reason i even bought those is because they were 11 dollars. yeah well you, you know anything it says arp on it so it must be really good we did get let's see if you guys can see oh that's that's, sarcastic. I'm a huge fan of ARP. that's pretty oh, i am too arp is all made in the u.s it's great stuff yeah, we got these pretty rod cap bolts so again if something down here fails i think we're gonna have bigger problems than these blowing up but you know i feel good about it fully built i feel good about it 
My phone's ringing in my pocket. We also had, unbeknownst to us, I don't know if you can see it over there, we had Gen 4 rods sitting on the shelf that could have gone in this Gen 3 motor, but it's too far. We're past that. So they're on five three pistons, and I wasn't gonna take them off. <laughs> we have replacement rods now for when this ultimately fails. Yeah, I mean, we have more it, blocks too. I got look at it that way. I got spare four five three blocks. If we wanted to go to a five three as well, or we have that five three that's been lonely sitting over there behind Doug for we will be using probably that. six months now. Probably with a Night Fury cam. Not the feel there. <laughs> is, that, is that a French? Yeah. Is that where, that, is that where Night Fury comes that, from? That was my French. In Nat Fury. Nat Fury. <laughs> Here's the noise of the Nat Fury cam. Yeah, no, that's yeah, got yeah. a little. That got a little German. Yeah, you got you. Uh, I got me or was I German? I got German. I got kind of a little bit of the Reich in there. Well, you can tell because yours got angry. Yeah, I started to get which angry is, and it went German. Which is how you can tell German. It's hard not to. Watch any documentary ever. <laughs> This is the technique. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody All right. Who, everybody who's super worried about assembling an LS, unless yeah. you have a very high dollar LS, don't don't you worry. Anyone who's ever built an engine for a racing application knows the technique he just used. <laughs> and for you're welcome. Oiling for teaching, yeah. for teaching you. <laughs> for oiling the holes. All right. Now we're going to see the next racing technique. All right. So which Doug was not enthusiastic I think, I to think, show me. <laughs> I think this is even more um I don't even think sloppy does it this poorly, but No, this is a without this is a, a pretty bold strategy. Right. I do, however, line up the journal so that my rod just drops right on. You're telling me you don't want to punch the rod onto the oiler first? All righty. So, oh, yeah. usually the ring. Oh, yeah. The more chunks you can take out of the, the head like... surface, the more you can dicker up the deck, the yeah. better. And that's what this technique is all about. Alright, so now... I, this is the part where I offer to help him. You don't need to help. We're good now. There we go. Man want piston going hole. <laughs> Where's on the piston? <laughs> the piston go in the hole? Let's so give it a one, two boop. A boop beep. The boop the boop. And in the oh. Beep it boop. You wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. And they told you you needed a ring compressor. Those fools! <laughs> 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 it's a bad omen. Oh, I'm missing the technique. <laughs> I was trying to get it done while you were paying attention <laughs> to the cat. Can't miss this. Cat sounds like she wants to help. The cat, I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this one is fighting me. <laughs> I'm getting tired of doing this. You want me to hit? No. Cause then, there we go. Ooh, you got violent with it. I got, I had to, I had to pop her in. Give her the old persuasion. That's in right there, that is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Nailed it. Exactly how you want to assemble an engine. This way the good people know that we actually do torque it. 450 foot pounds. Yep. Look how strong he is with you, ease. You got an oval. Oh yeah. Oval them, them rods. <coughs> oval eyes. Yeah. <coughs> hey. Beep. Oh, 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 uh, oh. Oh. That's not the technique. <laughs> That's not the technique you wanted. We'll cut that out. It's 45 foot pounds for those of you who yeah uh, who didn't I don't, follow. I, don't I, I, I assume I don't that stuck on. Everybody knew that it wasn't 450. You can try for 450. 
yeah, if so you want. The ARPs are 45, or if you have a rod bolt stretch gauge, which I don't anymore because I don't really assemble that many motors anymore properly. I just assemble them <laughs> poorly. But no, this thing's done. This thing so we're going to pop a head on it. Beautiful. <sighs> Feel all around for the dowel. Yeah. <laughs> Scrape it up as much as you can while doing that. All right, so our head bolts are already all lubricated, so I'm just going to drop them into place. Ready to reuse. Well, they're ARPs, they're reusable. <laughs> Factory or not, ARPs are. There we go. She's almost a motor. Alright, what are we torquing them to? I'm starting with 25, and then 50, then 75. and not get out my 3 8 torque wrench for... Use that big one that can hardly go down to 25. Yeah, for these little guys. <laughs> these are the techniques that you're going to use at home, though. I mean, we don't want to be dishonest about how these motors are really assembled by people like us. This motor is going to end up being fine. I've never had a real problem. I've never once assembled one quite as questionably as we did this one, but... Honestly... The only it's really not that questionable. Like no. the rings are gap, which most people wouldn't even have done. No, honestly, what I what I the, the main difference is the way we assembled it versus how I would do it if I was in like a shop is a everything would be a lot cleaner because I'd have a parts washer, um, and so everything would come out very very clean, and then uh, I would have my ring compressor. I would not use a screwdriver if it was somebody else's engine. Other than that, we put all new gaskets. We gap the rings for safety. We mm. put in ARP products, ARP head studs. We used all new gaskets. I, I joked about them being used, but the head gaskets are LS9 new head gaskets. Oh, we did swap the cam. Yeah. We didn't oh, yeah. show you guys that because we'd already showed you how to do a cam, mm -hmm. but there's the old ASA cam over here. Yeah, I decided not to use the LS, uh, ASA cam. I didn't really want to use a factory cam. They idle too politely. Yeah, pretty much for- That's literally the reason. Yeah, we wanted a bigger cam because we're children and we wanted it to sound cooler. Children want to go big or go home, so we did. We children. just threw one in real quick. Children want noise. And right. They want noise. Uh oh. I'm filming my feet. Ooh. There, at least I'll film. Some people are into that. Some people are into foot stuff, I know here. Look at this. Some people might be into this too. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. That was a good transition. On go the, on go the rockers. <laughs> Accidental transition there. Done. I sir. Oh. I'm waiting for my torque wrench to tell me what. Oh wait. These are all 22 foot pounds, like everything else in the motor. <laughs> and I just. It's 22 or 45. How did I skip over that with the electric? I literally jumped one. I don't know. That's gonna be a lot of ratcheting for you, though. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sucks. Because <laughs> I'm clearly not going to pick the electric up and, <laughs> and fix that. Do this. Oh, yeah. This is what the people I want. I bottomed all these out. <laughs> and I missed This one. is what the people want to see. <laughs> Hold on. We'll do a combo. Switch it quick. Yeah. Over oh, torque. Oh, yeah. Away. 22.7. 22.7. Oh. Nailed it. Never mind. What a professional. All right. We should do a speed assembling video. We can do that on one of my other motors. I mean, absolutely not on anything we're going to use. No, we should use it too, and prove that it runs good. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes get big. My face like, <laughs> proves that it runs mint. <laughs> prove that it runs at all. Uh, yeah, check that. Make sure that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Pull those up. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally staying in. Yeah, it probably is. 
we didn't want to bore you with the going back on of all the accessories and stuff, but that's easy. Thing, yeah, that's the easy Anybody part. can put accessories back on something with a 15 millimeter. Just put it on. Yeah, we believe in you. Yeah. We believed in you last time that you could get it apart, and we believe in you now. We believe. <laughs> um, so this is it. This thing's back together. Uh, it's destined for a boost yep. one day, so these manifolds are not going to be on there. Man, yeah, just kind of put them on there for looks, honestly. They're already V-banded, but we're not going to run them. We're going to run turbo manifold. So. Right, so this thing's done, and it's ready for a chassis, so sorry about the discontinuity. We'll try to get a chassis going so you guys can keep up yeah. on the build. But, but for now... Yeah. I'm gonna push this into the corner of the garage and we're <laughs> <laughs> to die. No, it uh, it's gonna go right next to the 5.3 that hasn't been used in the last year that it's been assembled either. No, actually, seriously, we're gonna actively pursue getting a chassis for this thing. Uh, the rings are gapped. We have ARP rod bolts, uh, ARP cam bolts, ARP heads, head bolts. The thing's ready for boost. We need injectors. Uh, we're waiting on a Jags oil pan, but other than that, it is finished and ready for our use. Now, from there, next week, we're going to be starting on a project that I've had in the backyard for probably around 10 years. <laughs> 10 years now. <laughs> um, but we're actually going to finally finish it. We, we made a handshake agreement that we'll have it running and driving by the end of next month, which yes, is sir. March. Yes, sir. And uh, what is it, Seth? Are uh, we telling him what it is? Yeah, we can tell him. Oh, okay, go for it. It's an RX-7, and we already teased you guys that we might be doing some LS stuff in the future, so as not to be too big of a tease, this car is probably about $500 away from running. Uh, we put it together a while back, it's got a built LS in it, Yep. and we are just not too bright. So we left it. <laughs> so we went on the 510 because that was more exciting to us at We the liked time. the 510 better. I still like the 510 better. Because it's I don't a know, we have the brain of children and the attention span of a gnat yeah and but we're gonna get back on the we're gonna get back on the rx7 so it's an ls fc with a t56 and that's already in mounted and everything and we'll show you it next week um, yep. we'll run through it we'll show you the engine bay we'll get it cleaned up and then you guys will get to see some fab work on the radiator yep um and we'll kind of give you guys a price breakdown of what the whole thing costs minus the building of the motor because uh, right. If that's you... kind of irrelevant. You could just stick a stock LS in there and have just as much fun, honestly. And then we're going to take it out and actually show you uh, us driving one of our cars, which has yet to happen on this channel. But we're going to do some big old smoky burnouts. Right. I promise you that. Because it has old tires on it on really ugly wheels, and we're just going to smoke show them. I agree. And then we'll spark show the wheels. Yeah. And when it destroys the quarter panels, we'll wide body it. So. I'm into that. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Second Chance Garage. We'll see you next time.